four common mistakes to avoid in job interviews, and it's bulleted. So don't do these things. Absolutely. Whatever you do, don't do it. I will say, I normally don't want to read something, but this, <laughs> this one first intro I have to read. Oh, my God, like, thank you guys so much for meeting me for lunch. I can't even tell you, like, how excited I am to be here. Okay, yeah, that was actually real, if you can believe it. I heard these words coming out of a stunning woman in a a cafe in New York City, and she was clearly stepping to a group lunch that was really taking place of an interview. And so this is how the article begins. And, you know, the guys, you know, she was, she excused herself to go to the restroom, and they were like, oh, my gosh, we can't hire her. She's just fake. And so that, you know, goes on to talk about the article of just about the common mistakes that people make in the interviewing process, and we have all been there, and we have learned greatly from them. (laughs) Either by fire <laughs> or, or otherwise. But I will tell you, one of the things that is, it, and I coach, and when I do coach about the interviewing process, it talks about being inauthentic. You can smell a rat. You can feel it. You can tell when someone is being disingenuous. And that's one of the things that, that they, the article talked about is, you know, truly there's about 250 resumes per job application and job opening that they get. So there's really only going to be a handful of these candidates that are really going to even, you know, stand out enough to, to be selected. So, you, you know, when you finally get there to the interview place, you don't want to put on a face, do you? You gotta let your real shine through because you know they. You wanted them to see your best self, of course. But if you're gonna, you know, sell a good and do a bait and switch, then that's gonna be a problem for everybody. So consider it definitely before you interview. And this is some of the things that you know I coach as well. You know, we talk about being our own selves because there's so many times that I've actually interviewed people and they sounded so great on paper, and then they get there. And you're expecting this one thing, and you get there, and they, they can't even articulate anything. And so they've not done the due diligence and the prep work involved, and then they try to fake it. And again, that just goes downhill real fast. Joe, have you ever, <laughs> you ever experienced that? Well, you know, I've done a lot of hiring. I, I'll tell you, I just, as soon as I heard you reading that and heard that the interview was at lunch already, just curled my toes. I'm yeah. not a fan of doing that at all for anybody Either side, it sounds like a bad idea. So I question the hire, first of all. <laughs> but that's what I do. Right. <laughs> you understand, right? So so for me, I don't like the approach. And I would even question whether she was being authentic or not. She may have very well been. Right. Um, but that that is the problem with the interviewing process. It, it You have to be, and, and I tell people this in a deal, you, your audience is who is in front of you. And yes. you have to know who they are, what it is their interests are. And if you cannot do that, you probably ought to come up with a reason why you shouldn't go to that meeting. Because nowadays, <laughs> you know, agree. we talked about it last week, you know, uh, cold calling is dead, right? But what yes. that means is you should know who you're getting ready to talk in front of. And probably this poor young lady was sitting in front of a couple of people that take themselves entirely too seriously, which is why they thought she was being um, uh, unauthentic. Uh, that may not be the case, but that was how she was perceived. Yeah, well, and, and I agree. You never really know what went on. Whoa, 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 whoa. You agree. That means exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> We're going to ring this bell. bell. No, I, I, I'm in charge of the bell today. Okay. So I get to okay. ring it. I get to ring the bell. No, but it's truly, I do agree with that. You know, you never really know what the situation is. And of course, we only get information secondhand unless we've been there. But I know that myself, for myself, I've been in a situation such as that before. The second bullet point, again, we're going to, we're going to try to crank through this article, was talking smack. And, you know, there's absolutely no chance that you will be able to elevate yourself when you are talking trash about somebody else. And I have heard that so many times. You know, you'll you'll wonder if you're going to be the next victim. <laughs> if, if you do something that, that is hard and you make someone do the, the hard, the right thing. I don't know how many times that, you know, growing up in the consulting world, truly, you know, we, we used to work long hours. I mean, we, we worked sometimes 16, 18 hours a day and sometimes 24 in case our client needed something and he needed it, you know, expedited. So, you know, you develop that rigor and, you know, just that that understanding that you just do what it takes for, you know, the best of the company. But anymore, you just don't really see that. You see, oh, here's what you find. You find, well, I can't really get that to you by then. <laughs> just like, excuse me? 
did I hear you right? <laughs> I'm not sure I understood that. Um, it didn't register. And, you know, they just have a different ethic altogether. And so, you know, then, of course, growing up with rigor and, and things of that, you're like, yes, we need it by this date. Then, of course, that's going to make them very angry. So they're going to go back, instead of actually working on something, they're going to go to the water cooler and complain and have all the, you know, the drama and the gossip and the things of that nature. And you're like, wow. <laughs> So you do have to be really careful. Right. I see this a little bit differently. But keep in mind for okay. all of you that are out there listening, I don't go to job interviews, right? So I'm the guy that couldn't get a job, and Mama had to borrow $12,000 on a home to buy me a small restaurant, right? So You so say I, that. You can don't, get a job Don't anywhere. listen to me about getting a job. <laughs> but let me tell you this. If you're agreeing with everything the person in front of you is saying, the odds are you're not going to get very far. No. I tell people all the time, if you don't say no at least three times, <laughs> or I disagree, Right. at least three times in a conversation. Um, this goes back to number one. You're not being authentic. And, and, I agree, and John. I'm not hiring or I'm not working with somebody that doesn't have this feel or this this opinion on exactly what's going on. Because you can say, I don't quite agree. The way I would say it is X, and then end up agreeing with them, right? So so there's a way to do that. And so that's kind of how I would take this. Well, and, and you know, that's really true. And it brings back a, a just a, a time where I was up um, in New York on a project and the, the actual CEO, he brought me back into a room after a kind of a, for a debriefing of, of the meeting. And uh, he just asked me how, you know, how did he think, you know, th- that it went? And I was actually very, again, I'm kind of <laughs> known as the teller of truth <laughs> and it can hurt. My nickname was the velvet hammer. I mean, really nice about it, but I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to come down on it. And, uh, you know, I shared with him my observations he was not very happy at all. He actually, you know, sat back in his chair very dramatically, ran his fingers through his hair. And, you know, at that point, he was just like, why? Why won't my people tell me these things? I'm like, well, you know, because they're not being as authentic as they need to be. So, again, it does exist in the workforce. So when interviewing, I do do stress for people to be authentic. One of the other three, the, excuse me, number three on the on the list is failing to ask poignant questions, which actually, Joe, you just covered really in truth. Because, again, if, you, if you're not going to ask a question or going to challenge something that they say or, or need to know a little bit more information, then it's really not authentic engagement. Don't even sit down if you don't have at least three or four questions to ask them. Because if you don't have three or four questions to ask, you did not do your homework, which means you should not be sitting at that chair that, in front exactly, of them. Exactly. I am in completely agreement with you. Exactly. Is what she said. <laughs> you better believe it. And number four. Number four is talking about more work history than accomplishments. There are so many times that I hear that, you know, it's almost like that they've memorized their resume. And so it's not their story. It doesn't become their story. Yeah, sure. I, I want to understand what you did. Sure. You know, I worked on um, with a you know major financial services company and I was on a global initiative and, and we did this. OK, great. But what was the bottom dollar? Yeah. What did you what did you do other than you know, what was your history? What did what it was? What was the ROI on that? I'm like, OK, well, I saved, you know, the company three hundred sixty five million on that project. That's what they want to know. Right. So they don't want to know just exactly what you did, but they want to know what results did you, I, that you I, had. I'll tell you something. I had a meeting yesterday with a with a client that owns a couple of uh, gun ranges mm-hmm. and and uh, rifle ranges, and and he wants to he wants to sell them. And we're talking, and I'm saying, yeah, I've got a client that did that. And the next thing out of his mouth would be, did you sell it? There we go. And then I talk a little <laughs> bit more, and I'd say, yeah, you know, we had a couple of clients. Did you sell them? Did you sell you know, them? So, so he really did just take, it didn't matter what I said. So by the third time, I realized I'm not mentioning anything that I didn't close, right? You like, know? We're, we're, you, he trained you well, didn't he? he right did. in a minute. Lucky for me, the only thing on my mind is always a successful deal, not, not one I couldn't close. Right. <laughs> well, those are important too because, you know, there's always lessons to be learned, but I'm with you. You always want to be able to be able to back it up with some quantitative and, you know, qualitative results.